Welcome to Chinatown Museum's History Matters live stream. Hello from Binondo, I am Janine Cabato, your host for Cool Lections. Today's topic will be on Philippine coins. Our speaker for today is Angelo Bernardo Jr. He began his coin collection at a very young age of eight. His Philippine coin collection covers all denominations and years. In fact, this personal collection traces back to the early days of the country's monetary history. Aside from the local currency, he makes it a point to collect at least one coin for every country that he visits. As an avid collector, Angelo is an active member of the Philippine Numismatic and Antiquarian Society. He is currently the proprietor of the Cada Collectibles and Antiques Shop. The structure for today's talk will begin with Angelo's brief run through of Philippine coin history. He will then show us his personal coin collection and also his top five coins. Dappled across the presentation are coin collecting tips, which we will then enumerate at the end of the session. This is especially important for the newbies or those who would really want to start their own coin collection. Are you ready to learn? Let's all welcome our speaker, Angelo Bernardo Jr. Uh, thank you, Janine. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, yeah, am I being heard? Okay. Yes, sir. All right, all right. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Chinatown Museum, for uh, hosting this talk. Uh, so just a brief run through of the evolution of Philippine coinage, starting with the pre-Spanish uh, gold barter rings and piloncitos. So the piloncitos and the barter rings uh, uh, tell of a story that we are really civilized uh, before the Spanish came to the Philippines. So next we have the uh, Barilla. Now, the Barilla coinage were uh, issued from 17, from the early 1700s to 1835. They were issued to address the shortage of uh, Barilla or uh, um, spare change. So that's where the word bari the, the barilla is where the barilla comes from. The word barilla comes from. Next, we have the Hilis Kalamai or the Cub Coinage, which were issued from 1556 to 1773. And uh, their, their irregular shape has made them uh, very uh, you know, irregular, but uh, it has been debased since uh, the irregular shape is hard to uh, manage. Was used also in the galleon trade between Manila and Acapulco. So here we have the Dos Mundos uh, pillar coinage. As you can see in the design of the coins, uh, we have two worlds there uh, representing the old world, which is Mother Spain, and then the new world, which is the Spanish colonies, particularly in South America and uh, Central America. So this was used again in the Galleon trade, reach our source to the Galleon trade. All right, uh, next is after uh, after the pillar dollar, uh, the Spanish started issuing a uh, bus type coins, bus type silver coins, uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, portrayed the living Spanish uh, kings and queens on the coins. So this was uh, in issue until uh, until the uh, Spanish the the colonies in uh, South and Central America were uh, became independent from Spanish rule by virtue of revolt. All right, the next one are the gold gold coinage from Central and South America, which also reached our shores. So one particular interesting thing with the uh, with the Philippines or collecting Philippine coins or uh, collecting in the Philippines is that there are a lot of uh, coins from all over the world here as we were uh, trading hub back in the Spanish times. So right after uh, right after uh, the uh, former colonies declared their independence from Spain. They uh, minted their own, own uh, their own coins 
uh, consisting of the signs of their uh, respective states, the symbols of their respective states, like uh, for Mexico is the eagle and the uh, uh, caps and race coins and uh, various other symbols from from these uh, con uh, countries. So the uh, local Spanish authorities here decided to issue counter stamp coins. That means that they uh, all coins coming in from outside the country would be counter stamped with Manila from 18, that is from 1828 to 1830. And then later on, uh, they would counter stamp Y2, meaning Isabel II, and then F7, which means uh, Ferdinand VII, which, is, which was the sovereign of the countries with, uh, of these of Spain before. Okay, next slide is the um, the first coins. These are the first gold coins minted in the Casa de Moneda or the Manila Mint, starting in 1861 from 1885. So the 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 denominations here are one peso for the smallest one, then two pesos for the medium one, and then the, the largest one is the four peso coin. So one of the rare pieces here are the uh, uh, four pesos, 1866, 1867, and then the uh, four pesos uh, Alfonso coins. So did you know that the uh, four peso coin then was uh, already the equivalent of one year's salary of a one year's wage of a laborer? Okay, next slide is uh, silver coins, also from the Manila Mint uh, from 1864 to 1885. From 1864 to 1868, they minted the coins bearing the uh, image or the bust of uh, Queen Isabel II. This is, com this, composed, this is composed of 10 centimos de peso, 20 centimos de peso, 50 centimos de peso. And for... Uh, for 1880 to 1885, we have King Alfonso II uh, or 12, uh, consisting of the same denominations. And the last one at the center is the Un Peso 1897. This was made in Spain already uh, because this was already at the height of the Philippine Revolution. And it bear, bears the there's the image of uh, the baby Alfonso, King Alfonso XIII. Okay, during the uh, Philippine Revolution, uh, several areas were, were already liberated from Spain and uh, the government in Malolos declared that uh, their own currency. So here is a sample of one. This is a two cent of uh, two centimos de peso, 1899. Yeah, uh, minted in Tarlac. Okay. Uh, when the Americas took, took over, it would take them until 1903 to issue new coins, for uh, specifically for the Philippines. So these coins were designed in um, designed uh, uh, with the American eagle at the, uh, the crest of an, an American eagle at the one side and on the other side is a lady representing the Philippines. So this is uh, interesting because you have two, two countries are represented in this coin, the Philippines and the USA. So this would be in circulation or use, uh, issued from 1903 until the Commonwealth time in 1936. Okay, here's a piece of trivia for everyone. Uh, who decided the U.S. Philippine peso? Is it A. Guillermo Tolentino, B. Melesio Figueroa, and C. Eduardo Castrillo? That's right. You will see those multiple choice answers. the The choices are down near the presentation. So we could, you could just click on it so that we could see the poll. 
Just to give you a briefer, Guillermo Tolentino is one of our national artists for sculpture. His works can be found inside the UP Diliman campus, and his most popular work actually is Oblation. Okay, so Melesio Figueroa, he was sent to Madrid at the age of 16, where he studied art. His expertise and status was what made him be selected as one of the judges for the Exposición de Filipina in Madrid. So this means that he lived in a time during the Spanish colonization. And letter C, Eduardo Castrillo, just to give you a background on him. He's a sculptor known for his work. If you've been to EDSA, he was the one who made the People Power Monument. Uh, before he became a sculptor, he was a jewelry designer first, and he studied in the University of Santo Tomas. He received the prestigious recognition of Republic Cultural Heritage Award and was also awarded as one of the 10 outstanding young men. Have you already given your answers there? Let's see what you answered. All right. Angelo, we have we have the answers in and looks like most of them got it right. With 69%, nice. people answered Melicio Figueroa. And then 23%, I'm so sorry, you answered Guillermo Tolentino. And 8% answered Eduardo Castillo. Eduardo Castillo is mentioned of modern times now. Right, so it's yeah. letter B, Melesho Figueroa. Let's proceed with your next slide. Congrats slide. to those who made the correct answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, proceeding now. Yeah, here, here are the coins issued in uh, commem commem uh, commemoration of the Philippine Commonwealth, uh, which is uh, dated November 15, 1935. So as you can see here, we have the Jugate or conjugate busts of um, Quezon and uh, President Quezon and President Roosevelt of the United States from the, fi uh, the 50 cents and the one peso coin. And the other coin is President Quezon and Governor, Governor General uh, Frank Murphy. Okay. Yeah, so this one, this, this is the, our answer for the Philippine coin history, which is uh, uh, designed by Melesio Figueroa. And the lady here representing the Philippines is said to be uh, his own daughter as the model for this, uh, for this uh, design. Okay, proceeding now to my coin collection. So this, uh, I just uh, chose a few pictures because uh, I have a lot. And for the first slide, these are my coin albums uh, representing my collection from Spanish times, uh, US uh, Philippine coins times, and uh, Filipino series, English uh, series, Flora and Fauna series, and then the new, uh, the modern Republic series. And, even uh, the coins from 1995 to the present. That's so a I lot, even, sir, no? Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. That's, if, that if you've been collecting, the coins yet. Oh, yeah. If you've been collecting since you were eight years old, how many coins could you have collected so far? Do you have a count for it? I I don't, don't, I count. don't count, but it's, <laughs> it could easily uh, <laughs> it's, it, it could easily be uh, several hundreds already. Wow. This is okay. aside from the coins that I am buying and selling as a uh, as a dealer in uh, the Kada Collectibles. Mm -hmm. Sir, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, where could the new collectors get copies of the the album itself? Where you put it? Mm. Well, actually, I bought I bought these uh, albums uh, several years ago. And I'm actually not sure if uh, uh, the manufacturer is still making them, you know, but uh, I can check. I can check and then uh, just get back to me soon. If okay. you're interested, I'm, I'll check. I'm going to check if uh, there are still uh, anything that's uh, still uh, 
being made. Okay. All right. And uh, yeah, the, the bottom is the Lincoln Coin Collection and then the Eisenhower Collection. Okay, uh, just the sampler of my Spanish Philippine collection. This is uh, the Alfonso 1897, Unpesto 1897. I also have uh, Quartos, but uh, they are too dark to be, uh, to be scanned. I, I have no time to Photoshop them for this presentation. And the, uh, the, the note you see there is the Republica Filipina um, made uh, by the first Philippine Rep uh, Republic. So unfortunately, I was able to sell this before the lockdown you know, because uh, I needed some backup uh, funds. And, funds. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is what's uh, good with coin collecting. It's, it's also an investment. Uh, when you need funds, you can easily sell them. As long as you keep the, the good ones, the, good, the really good coins, which but, I'll give in the tips later. I have a question, sir. Yes, sir. The plastic yes, that you used on the lower right, is there such a thing as an acid-free container for it where you could keep it properly? Yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Acid-free, uh, usually that's uh, mylar or uh, sometimes it's called OPP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But never, uh, never, uh, vinyl, uh, never PVC, uh, polyvinyl chloride. That, that one is highly... Uh, Acidic and it will damage the collection. It will yellow through time, no? Uh, depending on the material, if it's banknotes, it, the banknotes could turn brittle. If it's coins, mm -hmm. it could uh, have a greenish, uh, what you call verde degree, you know, the, uh, yeah. patina, greenish patina on it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So these are the peso collection, my peso collection. Th these are not. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the in top shape as some collectors would like to collect. But I love these coins particularly because they would uh, they were gifted my by my Lola. So it has a sentimental value. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next is uh, my uh, a page from my Kulyon uh, uh, coin collection album. You know, uh, by way of backgrounder, Culion was is a leper colony during the American time. Mm -hmm. By virtue of the uh, uh, Leper Segregation Act of 1906, in which uh, lepers were forcibly uh, taken away from their families to mm -hmm. live in seclusion in Culion, Palawan. For geography context, it is located in Palawan. Yeah. Yes, in Palawan. Yes, and. Uh, and uh, because uh, people then thought that leper was, leprosy was uh, contagious, so the American authorities decided to make uh, uh, as, uh, coinage that is used exclusively in Kulang, Kulang Palawan mm -hmm. under the supervision of the Philippine Health Service. Most of these are made of aluminum, so the condition is not, is, has That's been good. deteriorated over time. Yeah. Would you would you say, sir, that these are very rare to find? Yes, yes. Uh, to start with, uh, several uh, only a few thousand were made for each uh, mm -hmm. coin, as compared to the mainstream U.S. Philippine coins, in which uh, thousands and even millions were made. You know? So even some of these are even rarer than the 1906. The surviving issues here could even be rarer than the 1906, but they are still cheap compared to uh, the 1906 peso, which is the one of the rarest uh, coins in the US Philippine uh, uh, okay. series. Your coin for Culion set is complete. I I lack one uh, common uh, one of the common ones because uh, sometimes I don't have uh, time to. <laughs> Actively seek or out the. Uh, uh -uh. But it's common, naman, so maybe you. Yeah, find it I in can the easily get. Yeah. I can easily find That's it. True. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is the Filipino series, uh, minted from 1958 to 1964. So if you can see the, there was a interval of from between 1946 to 1957, no Philippine coins were minted. 
Mm-hmm. This is because uh, after the war, no, not, not after war, in 1949 and after war, they uh, decided mm-hmm. to, uh, the Central Bank decided to print spare change instead of uh, mint them. So we have uh, the, the five cents, 20 cents, uh, 50 cents, uh, half peso, one peso paper money. Mm-hmm instead of coins. All right. Um, we'll proceed to the next one, which were the uh, coins from 1968 to 1972. 1972, were in uh, Marshall was declared. So this is consists of the, you know, your lapu-lapu, one centavo, up to the Jose Rizal, one peso. Would you say, sir, these are your childhood coins? Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, we uh, the one peso Jose Rizal was my baon in uh, when I was in prep. And that was enough to buy <laughs> uh, <laughs> soft drinks. <laughs> this was enough to buy soft drinks and a uh, and chips. <laughs> po. Grabe inflation ano. <laughs> okay, eto na yata yung sa inyo ano hindi pa pala. Hindi this pa, is the bagong lipun- <laughs> This is the bagong lipunan coins, you know. After martial law was declared in 1972. Then, uh, minting of coins was resumed in 1975. So, this consisted again of the square, yeah, the square lapu-lapu coin. Mm-hmm. And then you have the, uh, up to the one, uh, one peso coin. The five peso coin was also issued bearing the uh, bust of uh, Ferdinand Marcos. Uh, one of the few uh, living rulers in modern times, to have their uh, their uh, faces uh, printed on a coin. Printed on a coin. Or minted on a coin. Mm-hmm. Here, uh, sir, I have a question. The mm-hmm. the upper... Uh, the octagon one? That is That was issued in... Yeah, that, we'll discuss that next. That's uh, actually uh, the, uh, our next topic, the Flora and Fauna series. Which was also start, which was also minted in uh, during Marcos time in 1983. So the flora and fauna series are one of the, I think, in my opinion, they're one of the more beautiful uh, coins to collect, since it features uh, various animals and plants that are endemic, or, or meaning uh, can only be found in the Philippines, like the tamarau and the uh, pandaka pygmya, which is the smallest fish. And siguro yun ay inabutan mo. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. And then uh, present day from 1995 to 2017, I think. Yeah. But I also collect those. And just to clarify, I do not buy those. I just uh, try to get them from my spare change. When I uh, I also try to get them from the bank if they have uh, new ones. So I'm, I'm really not uh, buying those in case uh, anybody of you is interested in <laughs> selling. So this is a good entry point for those who want to collect coins because it's easy. You, you just have to look at your existing money in your pocket and then see if you, there are years that are missing and then maybe you can get it from there. But there are, there are some pretty rare, uh, rare, rare ones, you know? like the 10 centavos 1998. Uh, in my years of collecting, I haven't seen one. Probably in, nothing is min, nothing was minted. Okay, my uh, foreign coin collection. Uh, this is uh, my collection of link, a page from my uh, collection of Lincoln pennies. So I collect uh, one of, for each mint per year. That's the mint, meaning uh, where it was minted in Philadelphia. Uh, San Francisco and uh, Delaware. Uh, Delaware, uh, sorry, no, it escapes Anna, but it's not Delaware. Okay, Detroit. Foreign coins, uh, this is the Eisenhower dollar collection. So, some, uh, I try to gain, get some uh, crown size coins from each country. 
like from the Soviet Union and the uh, Singapore. I also collect uh, point errors. Jack, can you change slides? Yeah, there. All right. So as you can see, this is a one centavo lapu lapu coin that is off centered. And what the watch was, uh, if you can see, it's uh, beautiful for me because it's uh, probably one of a kind. One of the those errors that are one of a kind. I also have a paper, uh, I'm also starting recently a paper money collection. So, uh, what type of coins do you collect? Or would you like to collect? Let's uh, let's have a poll again. Okay, we would like to check for those who are watching what time of what type of coins do you like to collect? Or if you are a newbie, what type of coins would you like to collect? A. We have Spanish Philippine coins. We showed you this way earlier. U.S. Philippine coins. Modern Philippine coins, which are very easy to find, especially for the newbies. And as was mentioned the earlier, Culion Leper Colony coins. So these ones are found uh, when there was a leper colony back in Palawan. All right. You will find the choices there at the presentation. Go ahead, click it. We will wait what you have to say. While we wait, we will answer some questions on Messenger. Angelo, I'll yeah, ask yeah, you sure. a question because there were some people who were really, um, they have some questions. John Abellera asked, does the mint in Tarlac still exist? Would you know this? No, it was uh, only during the revolutionary times and when Tarlac fell, uh, the mint also fell or was dismantled. This was also only during the uh, yeah, re um, Philippine Revolution. Yeah. Rogene so, Sellers asked also, is it possible for those coins in blister packs to still be corroded? Yes. Uh, because uh, some of the early issues, uh, early commemorative coin issues, actually have uh, used the PVC. Uh, but, so, so what do you suggest, the acid-free? Yeah, the acid-free. Although the later issues of the BSP are already in good blister packs. So I don't think they'll, they'll corrode. So the best way to do it probably is to, if you're not sure, you can transfer them. Uh, you can transfer them to an acid-free plastic. Or if you really have a uh, really valuable coin, Mm -hmm. You can have them uh, slab through a third-party grader in the U.S., like uh, PCGS and NGC. Okay. Third-party third graders would, uh, would uh, slab it for a fee. So that would protect the coin and at the same time establish the grade and mm -hmm. establish that it is genuine, that your coin is genuine. So when they establish error, this, is there a certificate of authenticity for it? Um, the slab itself would be your uh, would be your guarantee. Okay. Like uh, that's good to know. Uh, let's <laughs> let's see if I have a, a sample here. Now I didn't bring a sample of a slab coin, but uh, it's uh, you know it's um, made of hard plastic mm -hmm. with with the annotations and barcoding at the uh, at the top. So okay. the barcode you can trace, you can trace online. Mm -hmm. You can actually uh, safeguard it against being stolen because uh, there's a registry for that. Oh, uh, at least no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have another question here, sir. Last question, Muna, for now, right? All right. Jose Reyes asked, "Is there a law prohibiting living persons from being minted or printed on a coin?" I'm not sure with the law, but. Mm -hmm. um, 
Marcos was able to do it, but then he he, he had done it under Marcelo, and he was the only one uh, uh, who's making calling the shots, you know. But for no now, one, no one could uh, go if I'm not mistaken, him. yeah, if I'm not mistaken, you need the uh, congressional approval for it. You need for the, it. Yeah, you at, need the at you least you need the law to be an, enacted for for living persons. And then uh, just just a note that uh, this was done uh, since Roman times when the emperors, the Roman emperors, uh, embedded their images on the coins, mm-hmm. and then the kings and the queens up to now. But then because during that time and, they were still alive, right? Yes, yes. Like see Isabella the second. Yes. Yeah, they were still alive at that time. When they die, the new king takes over and means new coins. You know? So here we are. We have a president who was uh, probably probably thought he was a king or a queen. So <laughs> <laughs> he had this coin. He had minted yeah. this uh, face on himself. himself. <laughs> Speaking of um, the coins that you would like to collect, we already have answers. Those who are watching mentioned that half Spanish Philippine coins, 50% answered that. Nice. And then the next answer is US Philippine coins. Mm-hmm. And then after that, uh, 21% said modern Philippine coins, and only 3% said Culion leper colony. Okay. Right? Yeah. So Kulyon let's go to the Spanish. Hard, hard to find. Nga po. Yeah. Itong Spanish Philippine coin, sir, kasi 50% want to collect this. Is this hard mm-hmm. to find? Uh, yes, it is hard to find. Although you can get the common, the more common ones, like the uh, 1868 Isabel coins and the uh, 50 centavos eight, uh, 1885 uh, mm-hmm. Alfonso coins. Those are the most common ones to complete and to okay. get. So what we will probably do is do a type set instead of completing all the years, which, which is, can be hard, you can uh, do a type set at first. You know? I just uh, collect uh, one Alfonso, one Isabel, and then one Alfonso Trece coin. Then mm-hmm. that would represent your Spanish Philippine coins. Of it. That's good to know. Sir, before we proceed to your top mm-hmm. five coins, we will answer two more questions. A lot of sure. questions are coming in from Facebook comments. The next mm-hmm. question would be, ano po yung special plastic na nabibili sa bookstore? May mga kaunti po akong coins collection na kalagay lang po sa box. So, okay. this... Si Angie Carvalho asked this. Mm-hmm. Have a special... Yeah. Um, uh, it's an I. Mylar. I can try Mylar. Or yung how do you acetate. spell that, sir? M-Y... M-Y-L-A-R. L-A-R. That's a brand. As, um, it's something that the uh, sellers would know. That they mm-hmm. are. It's usually hard plastic. The one you used ano, in... Parang yung projectors before. You yes, know, that, that kind of acetate na ano. Yeah, yeah yung ganon. Uh, th- those mm-hmm. are the kinds of plastic that we usually hard, uh, hard plastic. Yeah. Our next question is, why do most collectors search for error coins? Is this because it's rare or because it's error? Well, it's, na, so it's, uh, it's hard to find. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to find. Among, imagine among... Uh, millions of coins of the same the same type you know and then you mm-hmm. have a different one so that was make it make it uh, makes it unique because you have a different coin among the several uh, among the others uh, among a sea of uh, coins that are that, that look alike you have one that's mm-hmm. different that's true so you you do have quite a number of error coins also yeah aside from a, what you showed us yeah I have a few I just take I, I just uh, buy the really uh, glaring errors, not the slight okay. ones, you know, because the slight ones I buy and sell them. Like mm-hmm. for example, a slight uh, off center, slightly off centered coin, or maybe slight double die. You know, I just mm-hmm. I just uh, sell those when I get them. Okay. We will proceed, sir, with your top five coins. 
you right. mentioned to to us last time that uh, mm. you were cherishing those coins with the US Philippine coin set that you have because your mm-hmm. grandmother gave them to you. So I'm hoping also here you will have some sentimental coins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is the 1868 50 centavos uh, Isabel coin. So it doesn't, uh, it's not, uh, the condition is not that good. But it was given to me by my lolo. So I'm, I'm, treasuring, I'm treasuring this over the better looking ones. Mm-hmm. So next is, next coin is chess, uh, 30th chess Olympiad, which was, made, which was uh, held in Manila in 1992. This was the commemorative coin that was made then. So not only is the, this uh, a bit rare, a bit scarce among the commemorative coins, uh, this coin of mine is special to me because I was also a participant during the 30th uh, Chess Olympia. No, participant. Uh, I also watched that before. Yeah, because I'm a fan of You were how old then, sir? 19, I, I was... Um, <laughs> 20, I think. 20. Mga college, no? Mm-mm. College. Okay. Okay. So, next is, sorry, next is the, the 19, peso 1907. Again, the condition is not that good, but given to my lol, given by my lola. So, it really stays in my collection. Mm-hmm. So then the fourth one is the Philippine Health Service Cullion Leper Colony uh, Curved Wing Variety. One of the rarer uh, coins in the uh, Cullion series. So probably rarer than the 1906 peso. But then again, the 1906 peso is more popular. But this, this, this I think, is more rare. Next is, uh, I, I had recently acquired this one and quickly rose to my top five, mainly because it's a very old error coin. It's 200 years old. It's uh, 1820. So the, the error there, as you can see, is to the right of uh, Ferdinand VII's bust. is a detail. It's a pillar, which is supposed to be uh, located at the back of the coin. Yeah. So there you have it, my top five. Parang na doble ito yung pagprint ano. Pag-scan. Yes, uh, ano siya, uh, parang nag-offset siya. Mm-hmm. You know, probably the uh, the one who was minting the coin. The coin was already minted and thought hindi pa nagagawa yung coin. He, he yeah. recycled the coin and then uh, there you have it. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's probably not paying attention to his job then. <laughs> <laughs> We will Ask everyone again. Um, we have a new poll. Which coin is more interesting? From what, what Angelo discussed a while ago, we have A, Piloncitos, B, Isabella Gold Coin, and C, US Philippine Peso. Which do you think is more interesting? There's no wrong answer. And actually, each coin has their own bit of history. But this would, if you answer this, we could at least see what the public, uh, public assumption is on what they think is really more interesting and more fascinating. All right. Just to share, no, piloncitos means little weight, Spanish for little weight. And we have Queen Isabella II, the royal mint was established during this time in Manila. All right. For the U.S. Philippine peso, this Angelo, this was during the American colonization period, correct? Yes, from from 1903 to 19, the big peso was made 1903 to 1906, and the small peso was made 1907 to 1912. Okay. We will go and, back to some of the. Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. And just to clarify, because I get a lot of questions, you know, be, uh, before I uh, appeared on TV, and uh, we were auctioning off before during my tie up with the Salcedo auctions, during the collector was tie up with the mm-hmm. Salcedo auctions, we were auctioning off a uh, 
one peso 1906 coin. And then when that uh, coin and me appeared on TV through uh, GMA's, uh, can I mention it? <laughs> uh, KMJS, uh, people thought that all pesos were the same and were, were worth as much. No? But uh, then again, just to clarify, only the 1906, the rarer one there. So, so it's not as much. So if you have the, if you have the 1906, then you might most probably holding a very rare coin. Yes, you are, you are, you are. It's rare because uh, most of them will, were uh, recalled. Uh, they were melted uh, and turned into 1907. Because at that time, the uh, silver, the silver prices increased and it came to a point that it was worth more than the face value of the uh, coin. So they had to make smaller coins to compensate. Mm. Okay. That's very interesting to know. Uh, we have a yeah. from sure, Angie sure. Carpino. She mentioned that I have the Gloria Macapagal Arroyo paper bill. The Arroyo error? Didn't say if it's an error. Is it valuable and worth it as a collection? It's, uh, so it's probably modern... worth it. It's worth it if uh, you have, uh, no, you have um, the error. The Arovo error, the the spelling of uh, Arovo. Ah, the Arovo. Sorry. Yes, it. she did mention that it's Gloria Macapagal Arovo. Mm -hmm. So she said, is it valuable? It is. Well, uh, not that much because uh, a lot was made. Mm -hmm. a, a lot was made, but uh, it uh, carries a premium of maybe two or three times the value of other notes. The value. Of uh, the same era, the same period. Okay. So note collectors then, would yeah. note collectors would collect uh, notes uh, that of different signatures of the Philippine of Philippine presidents and mm -hmm. different denominations. So each note would have would carry some value with collectors, but not uh, equally. You know, mm -hmm. because it depends on rarity, depends on condition, depends on collectability. Mm -hmm. We have one more question from John Abellera. Why do some old coins have Chinese chop marks? Oh yeah, good question, good question. Because uh, it was used uh, for trade and um, there are, believe it or not, before there were also some fakes uh, circulating. And uh, chop marks were used by Chinese traders to ensure that uh, to ensure that uh, other Chinese traders would see that it has been assayed already or has been examined by other traders. As you can, uh, if you will uh, notice today, that is still being used, that's still being practiced. Mm -hmm. By whom? That's being practiced by some money changers. Like, uh, you know, some dollar bills, when you exchange yeah. them, they, they, they put a small mark on it uh, with, their, uh, with their trademark, with their logo. So other money changers, when they come across that note, uh, this came already came from this uh, money changer. So we'll have to accept this without examining it further. So it's the same principle then with the coins with Chinese. With the marks. Yeah. Hmm. We have uh, one more question. It's yeah. where do you want to dispose an old coin? Where can you uh, bring it? you recommend to bring it? Uh, okay. Well, uh, to be honest, uh, here at the card, the collectibles, we buy and sell them. No? So if you have something, you can you can actually bring it to us or or send pictures to our page that uh, so you can uh, examine it and then we'll let you know if you're interested. Or if you're not interested, we, we could at least give you a value for it mm -hmm. or maybe tell you that it's common and it's not that sellable. You know, that's just... Uh, something that you can do. At least if um, any of our viewers are watching, Angelo mentioned that he could appraise. If you want to have your collections checked, you could also get in touch with him. So we will sh be showing you the contact info later. Yeah. yeah. And so also, I'd like there, to share. Yes, sir. Yeah, there are also different coin groups that you can uh, uh, locate on Facebook. So... You know, there's a lot of really, there's really a lot of channels for selling your coins. That's true. Not just there us. are, 
There are a lot. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. If, right. you, if you can so, see the yeah. groups, some have 50,000 members, 60,000 mm-hmm. members. So 3DA, quite a thing now. It's really quite the community. The community also is very active. So for those who are watching, especially the newbies, if you have questions, uh, join the group, ask away. There are some active members who are willing to answer your questions online. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, we have the answers already. So the viewers said that 37% they find Piloncitos interesting. Mm. After that, it's Isabella Gold Coin and US Philippine Peso at 29%. So hindi naman nice. siya nagkakalayo yung percentage, pero um, mm. Piloncitos is the winner here. I think maybe it because it's obviously, you could see it's a gold coin. Kasi yeah, yung yeah. Isabella gold coin, eh, it's already stamped, no? Naka-mark na. Mm-mm. Well, it's really interesting kasi it's really proof na ano, hindi totoo na we were discovered by Magellan. Like the in the song of uh, earlier, you know, by Yoyoy Binyame. Yeah, Yoyoy. <laughs> yeah, he said yeah. that uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the Philippines discovered Magellan. <laughs> it was, it's actually the other way around. Not, we discovered the Spaniards, not the Spaniard discovering us. Because we already have civilization before. As uh, evidenced by these uh, bartering centuries. By the barter trade, that's right. That's, that's why one of the reasons why we're doing this is really because coin collection, antique collection, and and other collections that are linked to, to antiques really have a bit of history in each of the items. Yes, yes. It's uh, really good. Uh, even if you don't like to read, you can read the history, history, the Philippine history or any history through coinage. You know? mm-hmm. Sir, we will run through the tips for our coin collectors, especially okay. for those who are thinking of starting one. So yeah, uh, yeah. Well, just a quick run through, no. First one is you focus on one aspect of collecting first because uh, if you try to collect uh, many coins at the same time, you know, you, you might lose your mind kasi ang dami talaga na. There are a lot of choices. You know, uh, you can concentrate, let's say, on uh, the easiest one is uh, collecting the current coins you know, from, from 1995 up to present. Then, if you got, get used to that already, you move on to one aspect, maybe uh, bagong lipunan coins. Or, uh, you jump to the chase, cut to the chase, and then go immediately for US Philippine coins, which are uh, fairly easier to collect than Spanish Philippine coins. So, But concentrate on one aspect of collecting first. Mm-hmm. Then That's a good tip. Yeah. And then there's the saying that you buy the best that you can afford, meaning you buy a coin that is in the best condition that is affordable to you. Because why? Because uh, this is not on, only uh, for collecting, uh, this is also for investment. And the ones that are investment-wise, the ones that are uh, really go higher or really increase in price year on year would be the, the best condition ones. So try not to, you know, if you can, for the modern coins, 1995 to present, go for the uncirculated ones. Mm-hmm. That, you know, you can even buy a premium for it if it's uncirculated and it's hard to find. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where, where can they find this, sir? Yung premium na coins? Um, how do you answer that? The thing. ones that are in good, you know, the ones in, uh, that are in good condition. So, you know, there's a lot. No? There are uh, in the groups. There are in the groups. We also sell, and mm-hmm. uh, there are also auctions. You know, so you can go for online auctions also. Yeah. And uh, and then, of course, siempre kung ano siya, if it's in circulation you watch out for the new change that's, that's being given to you at the grocery or at the bank. So sometimes, you know, you'll be surprised that, that there are a lot of uh, hidden gems that are just uh, in front of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So number three okay. is you learn to discern fakes 
from real coins. Do yes. Have, yes. Uh, t- off the top of your head, sir, how do you discern the fake one from the real one? Well, this one uh, really takes time, a bit of time to know the, the fakes. Uh, an obvious fake would be something that is uh, uh, different in appearance or in uh, texture from the, from the ones that are real. Mm-mm. And as for silver and gold coins, they have specific weights that you can check. Uh, and then um, a very low weight against this benchmark uh, weight would be already a telltale sign that it's a uh, bit. Like for silver mm-hmm. crown coins, it's just really around 27 grams, uh, more or less. So if you get a coin with a weight of 20 grams, when it's supposed to be 27 grams, that's already, uh, you know. Uh, you have to weight. think twice. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Although there are really uh, complicated fakes, the fakes that are hard to detect to be beginner, like uh, fake 1906 coins they are really hard to detect because uh, they carry the same weight mm-hmm. and most of them actually have, uh, you know, altered dates. It's supposed to be a 1903 yes. coin that was transplanted with a uh, inverted 9 to make a 1906. So those, were, those ones are harder to detect. And recently, uh, there are hordes of 1903 and 1906 pesos that came from Macau that are have the same weight and look the same, but actually uh, mm-hmm. uh, the more advanced collector would would really see if it's would know it. by would know by what, holding what? it under a my, uh, under a loop or a magnifying glass. Okay. Yeah. So, so there are to... a lot of fakes there and. And in your, uh, no, you, you probably have uh, some tuition fee at some point. Tuition fee meaning mm-hmm. uh, that's what we call our fee for learning what a fake one yeah. is the hard way by actually <laughs> yes. buying one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, through the through the years of collecting, you will essentially just develop an eye for knowing which is fake and which is not. Also. Yes. Yes. It's a learning experience. So, learning so your so, n- number four tip is do not clean your coins yet. Yes. Uh, well, uh, if you're a beginner, there are a lot of wrong ways that you can destroy a coin by cleaning. Mm-hmm. You know, number one was is uh, polishing it by metal polish. Number two is rubbing it with your hands. Okay. So there are some, there are really some good uh, cleaners, you know, the, the ones that can really do it the, without being it being uh, noticeably clean. But uh, mm-hmm. those are very few and it takes practice, years of practice. So I don't recommend you do it. Maybe do it later after, you know, after you've learned the, how to do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So this so, number five, yes, sir. Yeah, we already mentioned that number five. Yes, you buy did. acid-free albums and holders. Uh, we usually order this from abroad. We don't have this uh, local the albums unless the blue albums is still available. Then maybe uh, we can uh, we can uh, share them to the group to those who, who will ask. You know. Uh, oh, I will ask if it's still available. Oh, it's very, ano nga, kasi yung fit ng coin is really exact, ano? And then yes, it already yes. has the label. So it's yes, yes. very nice in terms of organization of the coins and the sets and the years. Mm-hmm. There. What yeah, a nice business this- too. If it's not in circulation, maybe someone who's watching could get into this. Because yes, there are uh, a lot of can, coin uh, collectors out there mm. who would need something like this. Yeah, I'm actually looking for a manufacturer to tie up. <laughs> to tie up to bring one into the market because there's a lot of demand for it. And I also okay. keep getting requests for an album, but I, I can't give them because uh, there's none in, uh, in stock locally. Mm. 
technically, sir, the page for it is really board. It's not just paper, right? So that the, the, um, the coins there could hold it. Actually, the uh, the page is board, but it's uh, there's a molding of uh, you know sandwich in between the boards is the uh, molding that fits exactly with the coins. Yes. So the plastic mold, that's the acid free plastic molding that's being used there. So no part of the coin is in contact with the board. Mm. Yeah. That's right. Because we have to keep it acid free. Yes, yes, yes. And even when you handle coins, you should handle it, uh, especially the uncirculated ones, mm -hmm. you should uh, handle it this way. Not like this. You should handle it uh, on the sides. Like you that. hold its uh, sides. Yeah. The uncirculated ones. Because your fingerprints uh, contain oil. Contain oil. And they can later on uh, react with the coins. Especially if it's uh, metal like copper. Or bronze. Okay. Our last one, sir, is keep coins in a cool and dry place. This means... Um, you keep it in your room. Yeah, it's uh, as much as possible. You you know, it's treat it like any other collection that's not uh, that exposed to extreme heat or extreme cold. Just uh, something that's cool and moisture free. Yeah, and then so that's it. Uh, that's it for that's it for now. Uh, in terms of uh, and by the way, I'd like to add if you have a rare coin and you're not sure if of uh, not sure if it's uh, if it's real or not, maybe you can. You know, it's uh, maybe it's sensible for you to have it slabbed by a third party later, mm -hmm. like uh, PCGS Philippine Coin Guarantee Service and. Uh, Newsmatic Guarantee Corporation in the U.S. Okay. Thank you for those tips, sir. All right. All right. Thank you, Sir Angelo, for giving us more insight into the practice of coin collection. Indeed, each yeah. coin gives us a glimpse of our history as a nation. We hope everyone who was watching learned something new about Philippine coins today. So here we are sharing the Cada Collectibles contact information, you could use Instagram at decada underscore collectibles or email decada.collectibles at gmail.com. I'm pretty sure that Angelo will get in touch with you. He will reply right away. For the month of September... Yeah, we're... if I don't reply the next day. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, if I don't reply... <laughs> well, sometimes I get uh, volumes of... Uh, inquiry, so I might not be able to reply immediately, but I will reply. All right. Uh, we will be replying. So, yeah, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> okay, lang. thank you, sir. Yeah. For the month of September, we are encouraging collectors to share with us photos of your cool collections. So, this is open to any collection actually, whether it be antiques, stamps, books and other collectibles that spark joy. For next week, we will be having Filipino Blades. This is in collaboration with Michael Cabato, Alan Ebora, Raimundo Lucero, Randy Salazar, and Rainer Zapanta. So they are Filipino Blades collectors also. Right. We are encouraging everyone that aside from our Facebook archive to also please subscribe to our uh, History Matters channel. It's actually called Museums Matter. This is also combined with our sister museum, Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Arts. So this is a joint account with them. You could get more insight into Museums Matters History Matters and also Art Matters. So uh, we have quite a number of videos already in. This might be useful for teachers out there also. Uh, the content that we have here is very valuable for your online classroom. And lastly, as mentioned, our topic will be on Filipino Blades. But on 
September 18, we would like to invite you at Vibal Channel also to be a part of our Museums Matter Educational Program because we are going to look into Martial Law Museum. This is headed by Professor Roy Mendoza. And in a time where historical revisionism is very prevalent, we find this topic important to cover and to be discussed. RSVP to all these events in our museum page. Thank you everyone for joining us. Happy weekend. Bye.